Hey everybody, it's Stephanie from Bookshelf Banter. Um, today I have sort of something different. I'm doing two book reviews at the same time, and that's because they're both by the same author. Um, the first one is The Silent Governess by Julie Clawson, and the second one is The Girl in the Gatehouse. Um, these are both uh, Christian fiction novels, and if you know me, which you don't, so I'm going to tell you, if you knew me, you know that I don't usually ever ever read Christian fiction unless it's going to be a C.S. Lewis book. Honest. If I'm honest, that's the truth. Because I remember reading <clears throat> certain authors' books a couple years ago, and I just thought they were so cheesy and too, like, like overtly saccharine and overly saccharine, and it was just too... Nobody talked like that, even back in the time period that... I don't think anybody ever talked the way that the characters in these books did. So... I was kind of hesitant to read any, any, or even try any more Christian fiction, but, I mean, I was, I kind of, I came across Julie Clausen's books accidentally, sort of, like, a year or two ago, and, because I got a free download of her, one of her other books, The Apothecary's Daughter, and I was kind of stunned by it, because there's, she hits, with, even including these two books, she kind of hits the issues head on, she, they're all Regency era books, and so you know you can just assume what social strictures are going to be on the characters already. Um, but she hits the issues head on. She doesn't kind of skirt around them. She says this is what happened, and she I mean she doesn't go into graphic detail, but you know what happens to these characters, especially the girl in the gatehouse. You know what what the main character is dealing with because she she kind of goes into detail, and you learn more and more each book or each you know each couple hundred pages or whatever. Um, and so, I mean, I don't know. I really enjoyed these books, and I, it surprised me, especially because, I mean, there, there were a couple times where I was reading, especially this last book, and I was like, is she about to go there? Did she just go there? She went there. And I was like, yes! She's talking about tough stuff. I mean, this is life. Crappy stuff happens. So why can we not talk about it in Christian fiction novels? Seriously. Even in Regency era, crap happened. So I love so much that she talks about these tough issues. She, you know, I mean, yes, there's a Christian perspective on things where when certain things go wrong, the characters, you know, are debating, you know, what is, I mean, because there are huge themes of, like, unforgiveness, you know, or forgiveness, acceptance, and, um, I don't know, I mean, or expectations of, you know, what people's expectations of you are going to be. And anybody, Christian or non, is going to have to deal with these issues to figure out, you know, why why did this happen? Or, you know, today I feel ashamed of something that I did. And so these issues are addressed in her books, in Julie's books. And I think the way that she handles it, it's, to me, at least personally, it's it's pretty truthful. I mean... The situation you kind of go through struggles where you're kind of accepting what you're having to deal with, and then you come to the point where um, you kind of you realize that you can't, you know, shoulder that burden anymore because it's too much, like it's too heavy for any person to bear. And so she addresses it, you know, with the Christian perspective of, well, give these burdens over to God, give this unforgiveness of yourself, give this shame, give this guilt, this feeling like you're completely unloved, give that to God, and then realize that He is so much more forgiving than any human can ever be. It's so true. In society, I mean, if you've, if you've been paying attention to the news lately, there was a recent death that was a really big deal for some people, and I vividly remember people making fun of this girl, or this, I mean, to me she's a girl, because she's two years older than I am, and, you know, mocking her for the for the stuff that she was going through and how she'd go into rehab and she'd come out of rehab and then she hadn't changed her life at all. She hadn't gotten any better and then, you know, it ends in her death. Well, I mean, I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm kind of rambling because it's so, like, this book especially was so thought-provoking to me because it's issues that, if I'm going to be real with you guys, it's issues I've dealt with about, you know, unforgiveness and and just being so, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's really deep, it's really deep, <laughs> but anyway, um, so talking about, like, the death thing, I mean, that, that, 
she is an example of what society can do to you and how cruel humans can be to each other. Like we, and when you put it in a biblical perspective, you see that God is so much more forgiving. And I'm not trying to sound preachy, but I think I am. Um, but I mean, that's just, and that's the thing is like this book isn't preachy, but if you know what it's talking about, I think maybe it just makes you feel <laughs> like kind of preachy after you read it. I don't know. It was just, and I, I don't know. I just really enjoyed these books. Um, I mean, there's, if you're going to take, you know, take away all the, the Jesus Bible biblical stuff and just look at it as a story, it's about, I mean, there's mystery, there's intrigue, there's, of course, romance, because, I mean, it's, you're going to, it's you're hard-pressed to find me reading something that doesn't have romance in it. It's very rare. And I'm going to read something like that. Um, but I think especially The Silent Governess, this one, I to me, it, I had just finished reading, in fact, I had just finished reading this book when I started um, The Silent Governess, and it, I mean, it had, like, the same mystery kind of thing going on, and um, and I'm a huge fan of that. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, if you're wary about reading it because it is Christian, I think you should still check it out, and I say, if you're going to start with any of them, I say start with this one, because um, I think this one is the most, um, what's the word, accessible to anybody. Like, I, I genuinely think that. And I'm not going to just say something just to say it to get you to read a book. It's, it's To me, that's the truth. Like, it's the most accessible book. Um, and it's just, it's a really good book. They're both really good. Um, and it sucks because there's only one more book of hers that I haven't read. And then that's it. Because there's only four that I know of so far. Four? Yes. Four. And she has another one coming out in June, in January. So I'm going to post the link to that one because I came across it the other day. Um, so if you have this same issue where you come across any kind of religious fiction and you think, oh Lord, could this get any cheesier? But you want something different that's not cheesy, then check these books out. Or let me know if you know if you have any book recommendations of any books that you've read that are similar in the, to this or anything like that, let me know, because I'm always open. doesn't mean I'm going to read it, because I like to look into stuff before I decide to read it. Um, but definitely send me suggestions, recommendations, just stuff in the comments. Um, and I hope to hear from you guys. I'm definitely, this is such a, like, after reading these books, it's kind of a hot-button topic for me, and I'm like, I want to know if anybody else has read stuff like this that you get really excited about. And I'm just, I'm excited to get excited about a Christian book. Like, that it hasn't happened since I read the Narnia book. And that was when I was 13. And that was a really long time ago. So, um, yeah. So let me get, let me know what you guys think. Bye.